Happy Love Day, everybody. It is February and it is time for Valentine's Day. So, what better way to spend your Valentine's Day than to cuddle up with your loved one in a nice hoodie or a nice hooded blanket? Yes, our friends at Cuddly have your Valentine's Day sorted as they do every time of the year. So, the two different deals I'm going to offer you this time around. There is a buy one hoodie you can get one free with a special voucher as well so use the code love is love at checkout uh, using the link below as always and also a mix and match on hoodies and blankets you can save up to 70 percent on any combination of cuddly hoodies and blankets over at the website as well hit the link below um use the code love is love for your for your hoodie sale and you get 70 percent off in general for a combination of hoodies and blankets on the website as well using the links below as always go and check out our friends over at cuddly we love them here at bloody good read and bloody good screen and they keep you warm while the weather is still a little bit cold outside hope you enjoy the show Welcome to Bloody Good Read. As we like to kind of try and push a um, bit more kind of books on the younger readers as well as the older readers. And the YA genre is quite popular, especially in kind of fantasy and horror. I went to kind of get an author on to share her thoughts and her three Bloody Good Reads from the YA kind of area. So this week's guest, her brand new book, The Girl With No Soul, has been making big waves with YA readers, especially in the fantasy kind of genre. Uh, she's a former bookseller just like myself. I'd like to kind of find out what her three bloody good reads are this week. So welcome to the podcast, Morgan Owen. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. As always on the podcast, what we'd like to get uh, our guests to do is pick three books they love, which is a hard task to do, I know, I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> but what we like to do before we get on to kind of your work and your free read picks, just wanted to find out, how did you get into the fantasy genre? Oh, I feel like I didn't even get into it. It was just always there. <laughs> From <laughs> It was always my um, main goal in reading a book would be to escape for a while not because I was you know (laughs) miserable all the time or (laughs) anything like that but just I loved the idea of being able to you know open a a door to another world and go and live there for a little bit so that had just always was my thing that I wanted to do every weekend and um, it didn't matter what world I was like walking into I would read anything and then you get a bit more discerning as you get older and fantasy just remained like the pinnacle of what the imagination is capable of and so for a writer I think it's super super fun to write like without those limits reality can be kind of boring at times it's got a lot of rules sometimes things that look like they're going to be interesting turn out to have a really like tedious explanation so um I just think it's so fun to write fantasy and to have those rules kind of bent and you get to play with them but it's also really fun to read fantasy as well so when did your love of reading start i'm assuming assuming at a younger age so what kind of things did you kind of read when you were growing up well i always say that basically when i was a young by the time i was a young like pre-teen uh early teens my thing was like reading the most adult books <laughs> I could get my heart like that was the whole point uh, to find something really like challenging that adults talked about because you have that curiosity I guess you want to know what these secret conversations are that you're kind of cut out of so yeah so there was a lot of that and so I was uh, kind of into uh, uh, you know um, Ursula Le Guin on the fantasy side was like a big one for me and um, Angela Carter and then some stuff like you know Sylvia Plath and Virginia Woolf um, sort of the blending of those two things Shirley Jackson um, yeah and that's probably a bit older older when I was younger it was kind of you know your classics um, like Narnia um, and the worst witch series and um, yeah 
everything basically that I could get my hands on. Not a, not a lot of series we hear so much in the podcast because I don't have so many British kind of guests on your say. So oh. It's nice to hear some books that I kind of know of. Yeah. For change that aren't Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. So I'm assuming that love of kind of reading led you to become a bookseller as well. Yeah. Because that's obviously opens up a huge array. Because I know when I used to kind of work for Waterstones, it was you used to have the boxes for the books that you can go through that were damaged and you could get to kind of, you know, find hidden gems in there that you'd never thought you'd find Absolutely. and kind of meet new authors Is that, so that must have helped a lot with your kind of inspiration to want to be a lot i missed the discount the discount was ah, really yeah. exceptional at one point I think- oh it was especially when you used to get the hmv one as well <laughs> yeah oh those were the hmv oh. the golden days um old days. <laughs> yeah so i also find like just working in a bookshop meant that i knew an extraordinary amount of titles and who wrote them and it's a knowledge that like you kind of lose a bit when you stop working in Waterstones. And I mm. missed that because even if I hadn't read the book, I knew everything. I knew what was out in what genre um, to talk about it and to know what kind of customer would want it. So, um, yeah, it definitely helps. You get the cheap books, but you also introduced to things that are completely out of your wheelhouse. And now I think sometimes I'm looking for comfort reads and I'm sticking to stuff mm-hmm. that I know. There was a bit more of that element of surprise when I'd be working on the shop floor and I'd just see something that would grab me out of nowhere. So, yeah, it's a great start yeah. for any writer, aspiring writer or book reviewer or book talker. <laughs> Covers yeah. always help. You can be putting away books and, you know, just a cover jumps up. up I uh, miss those days. I really <laughs> <laughs> same, same. <laughs> so before we get into kind of how you started writing yourself, Again, like we like to do here in a podcast, is force authors to pick three books they love. Mm-hmm. So what is your first book you brought along this week? Um, okay, so I'm going to pick a book um, that I think straddles that place between fantasy and sci-fi, which is um, uh, The Eternal Return of Clara Hart by Louise Finch, which is Carnegie nominated in the, in the, in the list that recently came out which I'm really smug about because I've been recommending this book to everyone all year. Um, so it's really good to see it get the the kind of, you know, the recognition that I think it deserves because I think it's absolutely outstanding book. And it's basically about a young man who is reliving the same day of his life over and over again. Um, so it's got this time loop kind of speculative fiction angle where, mm-hmm. you know, he's making changes and he's trying to stop things from going wrong trying to take control but underneath that is this really powerful message about the things that we kind of tolerate in society and what we turn our backs to Um, and it was just exceptional and I'm really into um, sci-fi and time loopy stuff like Tales from the Loop which is um, like it's a comic book and it's a tv show and so I'm really into that and this book really hit the spot for me it's got this bright lime green cover that really catches your eye Uh, five stars can't talk about it enough evidently <laughs> <laughs> brilliant choice yeah brilliant choice. awesome cool so let's get into how you started writing so i'm assuming your love of reading also led to your love of writing so yeah. when did you decide you wanted to become a writer yourself i have a good memory of uh my first i can't remember whether i was in like the foot reception year of primary school or the year after that but i was already writing stories then they were about, you know, families of cats and stuff. They weren't very um, challenging. <laughs> they weren't literary <laughs> masterpieces. But um, that I can't remember a time when I wasn't writing stories, basically. It started so young. Um, and, yeah, I had a grand. My mom was really, you know, she was really sort of um, insistent that I had a lot of access to books and that she read to me every night because that's not something that she had in her life um and I also had a grandmother who I spent a lot of time with and we used to uh get the plain sheets of office paper that my dad uh gave to us and make our own little books with our own little covers that we illustrated (laughs) um so yeah literally always I can't remember a time when I wasn't writing and I can't remember deciding like I'm going to be a writer it's just like always something from a really, really young age. So why did you decide to kind of try your hand at it yourself? I mean, you've been in PR, you've been a bookseller. When did you decide, okay, 
It's time to do this now. On, the, honest answer is, <laughs> the honest answer is that I don't feel like I made that conscious choice. I feel like other people around me pushed me. In, <laughs> it just sounds bad, but it was a great thing. Uh, and that I didn't have that confidence myself. So some of like, I know there are these fantastic writers out there who don't put them set, put their work out there at all because it, it can be a very like private thing and it's very frightening to share something that's like a bit of you, you know, a piece of your heart and soul so to speak so I know a lot of people um, are stuck in that place now where it's just them just something they do for them and that's what it was for me for a really long time something that I was just doing for my like pure love of it and I probably was like one day I will be published but I didn't I didn't think oh I'm not good enough yet Um, Mm. and then I was just lucky to meet people along the way who encouraged me and introduced me to people or sent my work to someone and they loved it and that's kind of what happened like I wouldn't be here if not for those other people I think Um, obviously I know loads of other writers that have that moment of illumination and they make the choice they go out and they work really hard they you know so it's can the, the paths are really different for different people in publishing and I just feel like I was lucky enough to get like nudged gently over the line by other people <laughs> which is nice you know obviously people have enough yeah. kind of passion for your for your writing that they want to push you so no that's an amazing route into it mm-hmm. so tell us a bit about your brand new book so it's your debut fantasy novel uh yeah. the girl with no soul so tell us a bit about the book and where the, the inspiration came from yeah okay um well it's set in a world where the government have the ability to see your soul which you know is uh depicted visually and uh, there are five parts of the soul so everything that makes you you all of your secrets dreams fears everything is visible through this kind of psychometric technology Um, and the story is about Iris who has no memories she feels nothing she's completely detached from the world around her um, and she's actually asked to steal a priceless ring um, and spoiler when she does she finds like her own lost memory inside it which is a memory that's pretty dark something bad that happened to her that she has no memory of anymore and um, she kind of embarks on this journey to find out what happened to her and build herself back whole and so it's a lot about identity as well and what makes us feel human what does it mean to be you know completely alive and to uh to know ourselves um so yeah it was inspired by I mean that I guess being a person like growing up in society searching for meaning searching for identity and how we find little bits of ourselves in like this the odd song here or like this bit of a video game or this picture that I saw like that's where all of my bits of my soul are and those things that I um found and fell in love with throughout my life um and then, yeah, also I found some magic lantern slides <laughs> at a car boot sale um, and I thought they were amazing. And I had the idea, like, what if this was a scene from someone's memory uh, kind of being projected on this oldie worldy, you know, uh, the magic lantern. It's kind of like a shadow show on the wall. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it all came about. And then everything else grew from there. It must be nice with fantasy as well because you get to build a brand new world with this. Yes. I mean, do you find kind of creating this world yourself? um that you might want to do more going off of this one absolutely um world building is like my big thing like um a a question sometimes writers get asked is like what comes first is it the character or the story or and I usually have the world in mind first and then have the story fit into the world Uh, for whatever reason that kind of builds itself up piece by piece first in my mind and then I start to visualize who lives there and what kind of problems they'll have so yeah, world building is my big thing, the thing I enjoy most about writing. And I try and do like world building in other hobbies of mine, you know, like video games and stuff. So yeah, um, that's my main, like the thing that gets me really excited to sit down in front of the computer and start writing is building that world up from scratch. It's like the most fun I can have. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So that's out now, it came out in March. It did, it did. Which so feels per- like yesterday, perfect. but also five years ago at the same time. <laughs> um, you, you're still kind of quite heavy on the promotion as well. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, especially coming up to Christmas. Um, I mean, not not so much like. Well, I mean, there's different avenues to this. Like, um, it came out in France recently, so 
-hmm. I've had like that kind of push from that and really enjoying like posts from French readers and the beautiful flat lays they do and all of that is amazing. Um, And uh, yeah, basically I've had like a lot of events and things spread out throughout the year Um, and I've got a school visit next week. And so it's those things that sort of maintain you. And before you know it, it's been six months. It does kind of go quite fast like that. Um, but then, yeah, authors do a lot of their own self promo online as well. And, um, you know, that can get tiring as well. So sometimes when you're writing, you know, um, you need to take a little break from that side. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it never ends. I think you're always kind of promoting yourself because it's a tough out, tough out there. There's a lot out there now, yeah. a lot, a lot of great fiction. And yeah. yours is one of them. So, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh... You know, I've been reading it this morning. Um, this morning before, kind of talking to you now, and it, it's a lovely book. Oh, thank actually, you very much. For, you know, I, I dipped my time a bit of YA through this podcast before, and yeah. you know, it's definitely up there for some of the, some of the greats as well. So that's very lovely of you to say. Really lovely read. It's a great, easy to get into read as well, which isn't too kind of literally heavy, uh, which we have a, a few of through, through the YA. You have to say, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not about that. I'm not about that. So let's get on to your second pick. So what is your second Bloody Good Read? Okay, so the other big book um, for me this year, which again, I've been recommending to everybody and um, probably, you know, people get a bit sick of it. But I think when something really hits the mark for you and something's really your cup of tea, I think you just want to make sure as many people read it as possible. So my next book is Rebel Skies by Anne Say Lynn. Uh, it's mm-hmm. going to be, it's a, I don't know if you've read it yet, but it is, a, 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 I can see it's so ideal for that uh, YA adult fantasy crossover market. Um, it's basically mm-hmm. about paper monsters um, and a world where like origami is kind of the system of magic. And yeah. it's just sensational. Um, if you like world building, then this has some of my favorite world building of any YA fantasy that I've read in the last however many years. Um, it's just a fantastic story and it, it's the one I'm like really, really excited for book two to come out, which is, you know, it's like a rare feeling to get. I think you've that that special one that you become uh, a super fan of immediately. So yeah, Rebel Skies is the, the first one. I'm not quite sure what the book two is gonna be talk, called, but yeah, there's uh, three books in the trilogy. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it says it's, it's inspired by Asian culture as well. It is, it and is. You, you're, a, you're, a, you're a video game fan as well, you're saying. I so am. It's kind of I am. Well, I love anime and video games. So maybe, ah, yeah, there's perfect. flying ships, you know, oh, this this is, <laughs> this is, that really hits some, the spot for me. Um, It's just, you can see it so beautifully in your head as well. I still think it would make a great animated movie or a video game indeed. Um. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure what else to say about it without like ruining the plot, but Spoiler, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, there's a lot going on and it's great. Read Rebel awesome. Skies. <laughs> Perfect pick. It, the, the cover art looks beautiful, I have to say. Yeah, um, yeah everything about it is beautiful. So mm-hmm. I think actually if it's one of those books, if you pick it up and read like the first page, I think it will probably grab you straight away. I like the idea of the origami part of it. So yeah, yeah that's just a dare. I like like the like Sam that one. It's definitely yeah. on my list. Uh, cool. So when it comes to kind of video games, then I have to jump into this. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a gamer myself as well. So what kind of stuff do you normally go for? It's... Yeah. Well, okay. So my big my big thing. Well, I'm a cozy gamer mostly. Um, mm. I don't like to be shot at or be shooting at things, which does rule out quite a lot of games. Um, mm. I will make an exception if it's got an incredible um, law or a world, you know, so something like Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto, I could spend hours exploring. I'll go for that. Mm. That's fine. I'll put it with the shooting. <laughs> um, uh, and um, like Bioshock and some of the, like Skyrim, you know, if it's got a mm-hmm. big old world for me to explore, then I'll probably love it. But well, Scott, Skyrim, Skyrim, now that's law. You know, that's a, yeah. that's a huge huge story especially fantasy wise as well yeah and it's underrated as a form of writing you know I don't Mm. see like video game storylines getting the same you know kind of accolades that a written story does when sometimes you know the work involved is just as impressive and it has just as great of a emotional arc 
Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, my other big thing is um, world building myself. So um, Animal Crossing is like my number one all time game. Love to like start me a fresh island and give it a really <laughs> niche theme, you know, like cyberpunk, big, yeah. always on retro futurism. Uh, so I do like that uh, every now and then and start a new theme. Uh, the Sims, you know, anything where I can build, oh, create, <laughs> decorate, yeah, uh, yeah. So, but I'm, mm. yeah. So it's either got to have a big world that I can explore, or let me build a big world. <laughs> got to say, Animal Crossing, brilliant game. Just, just, just picked up a Switch and loving Animal Crossing. Oh, so. may I mean, I hope I don't know if you're on Instagram, but please follow mm. me on Instagram. I'm like embedded into the ac instagram community and they are so creative it is like it never ends every day i can find something new that someone's doing with this game that's been out for quite a few years and you pick it up and it looks really simple at first but what they allow you to do with that kind of sandbox is incredible so it's really great to um get younger people into storytelling as well i think so what are you working on next so obviously you had the book come out this year are you working on a second book to follow up on this one or you having a little bit of a kind of a break between yeah I think well both things are true I am having a little bit of a break because this all happened like quite fast um but yes there is a sequel in the works yeah I'm just very I feel like there were quite a lot of big stakes in book one and um building on that is quite a challenge um yeah and mm -hmm. building that world as well so I really want to get that right take my time with it a little bit um, and then yeah I always have about three other story parts that I'm working on at any given time <laughs> that I kind of jump around depending on what mood I'm in and um, yeah I really am a huge sci-fi fan so I would love to um, to dabble in some sci-fi in the future but we'll see <laughs> about that. Okay so before I let you go I need to find out what is your last bloody good read? Oh gosh. Okay, so I I don't know if anyone noticed, but the first two books that I've recommended were all debuts from this year. Um, I love when people ask me to recommend books. I love picking debuts because I know how hard it is out there, how hard everyone works, and um, so I'm gonna stick with that theme. However, I'm staring at my books here, and <clears throat> yeah, I've got quite a few content. Oh, okay, okay. I know what it's got to be actually. But forget what I just said. Forget what I just said. Um, <laughs> Gabrielle Zevin, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Okay. Be because we were talking about video games, this, mm. if you haven't read it yet, this is the game, this is the book that every video gamer needs to read. It is about, the. It is a, it's a love story about video gaming. You know, it's also about friendship and, and coding and, and life, but it is, it's that book that summarizes everything that is great about video gaming and that crossover between literature and video gaming which is like you know not something that you see very every single person I know who picks up this book falls in love with it even if they're not really a gamer so but I know it has a really really profound effect on people that um you know where, where video games aren't just video games they're like your memories of childhood they're you and your friends and you and your family they become like your nostalgia and they become the framework for your you know adolescence and stuff this is the book for you um it's absolutely beautiful yeah i think it's probably won a bunch of awards already i've lost count but it is absolutely fantastic that's um gabrielle zavin um tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow was a Radio Two book club pick in July. There you go. <laughs> See, you've got all the you've you got go. all the source on it. <laughs> Quick Google <laughs> yeah. and a New York Times bestseller as well. Yeah, so. um, if you, yeah, that's that's the one that I think. Yeah, I definitely recommend that to you. Awesome. Mm. Three really good picks, and I'm so glad you haven't picked any Stephen King. Ah, <laughs> well, what's the deal with Stephen King? <laughs> long running joke every, pretty much every author picks Stephen King uh, yeah, I, did really, in, should I, like more, I didn't know whether I should have picked more horror choices but no 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 no, no, no. The, being alive is quite horrifying so I think everything yeah. <laughs> can... no no the, the podcast kind of covers um, kind of fantasy horror yeah. thriller crime and everything so no I, I, it's nice to have something non horror for a drink nice so, I do love a bit of Stephen King though just in case he's listening um, every, everybody does <laughs> <laughs> Always said, if I get him on the podcast, that's the last one I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. It ain't ever going to happen, but you know. <laughs> I don't know. You keep believing. Strange things happen in this world. Oh, you never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, the Girl With No Soul is out now. Yay. Yeah, so where can people find you if you'd like to be found? <laughs> Good. I like the way you phrased that. Um, <laughs> I, well, I am on Twitter for now, if Twitter still wow. exists at the time of this recording becoming available. Um, and I'm but, at... but by the end of this weekend, you never know. I know, right? So <laughs> as a disclaimer, um, I'm Morgan Owen YA on Twitter, or one word, obviously. Um, but I... I'm more active on Instagram. I just have a bit of a weird name there. It's sailor, you know, like sailor of the seas dot Mm -hmm. crossing like animal crossing. And that's because I mostly post elaborate animal crossing builds on there. Um, But also, you know, some random book stuff and (laughs) uh, geekery. So if you're into that, um, please follow me on Instagram. I'd love it. Thanks. Awesome. Again, a huge thank you for Morgan for coming to the podcast this week. Do check out, her brand new book also all the kind of websites all the details for for morgan is in the description below and a link to the book as well over at waterstones as well as always a huge shout out to our sponsor up on World book club this is going to be a fun monday time of night and i can't say words properly <clears throat> right so they are the uk's best horror and thriller book box service bringing the wonders of a haunted bookshop straight to your door every single month you have two boxes you can pick you've got the full guts box which is a brand new book a possibly haunted second hand book and and also a another indie title which seems to be the, the, the norm nowadays when in the box or a copy of either Gaslin or Black Static uh, you also get pins, bookmarks badges you get stickers you get all the kind of you know, bits and pieces that you love as a, as a, as a horror lover uh, you also get drinks, UK snacks and all that as well in the box if anyone wants books, don't blame you. Books are awesome. You can just get the bare bones box as well. And you can use the code BloodyGoodreads at checkout to get 10% off your first box. Uh, as always, you can catch me over on Twitter while it's still around. By the time we get to this, it probably isn't. Uh, <laughs> at Bloody Good Reads. Uh, you can catch me on Instagram at Bloody Good Reads and over at Facebook at the Bloody Good Reads Book Club as well. Um, and you can catch us once a month as well on Bloody Good Screen, where we go into the world of cinema and try and find the best and worst of, of cinema and find out which films are truly a bloody good screen uh, as always i've been your host mark goddard do give us a review over on itunes that's the one and spotify and uh yep yeah, gets the name out there as well and as always thank you for listening it's 2023 and we've made some new friends here over at bloody good reads this week I want to just throw out a really cool sale that's going on over at Prezi Box. Prezi Box is your go-to place for personalised gifts. They have a large chance when they're gone, they're gone, 50% off sale, running now until the end of March. They've got some amazing stuff over there. Go and click into the link below. Hopefully you'll find something amazing for, say, Valentine's Day. It is love day, everybody. Or you were saying to take for a birthday present or even for Christmas later on down the line as well. Be a bit, you know, organised this year. Especially when everything is so expensive at the moment. It's a great chance to yeah, get a little bit of a sale and get some amazing personalised amazing gifts. Go check them out. You know Prezi Box. They are pretty awesome. And hopefully you enjoy the rest of the show.